Hello and welcome to the solution video for spicy question number 25. In this question we're given three sequences. We're going to start by trying to find the nth term of each of them. So let's start with sequence A. To find the nth term we're going to look at the difference between each of the terms. So for this sequence the differences are plus 13, plus 15 and plus 17. Now this isn't a constant number so it's not a linear sequence so we'll check the second difference. In this case it's plus 2 and then plus 2 again. Since we have a constant second difference, it tells us we've got a quadratic sequence. If you half this number, you find the coefficient of n squared, so half of 2 is 1, so it's just an n squared sequence. What we do next is write down the sequence, and then write down what n squared is underneath that. Now n squared is just the square number, so 1 times 1, 1, 2 times 2, 4, 3 times 3, 9, and 4 times 4, 16, and so on. Now we subtract n squared from our sequence. So 11 take away 1, that's 10. 24 take 4, that's 20. 39 take 9, that's 30. 56 take 16, that's 40. We're now left with the linear part of the sequence. You can find the nth term of this by looking at the common differences, so it's plus 10 all the time. And you should actually just recognise this as 10n, since it's just the multiples of 10. So the sequence is made up of n squared and 10n, so its nth term is n squared plus 10n. Now let's look at sequence b. So sequence b goes like this, and if you do the common differences, you'll see it always goes up in 10. This means we have a linear sequence of the form 10n, and since it starts at 410 rather than 10, we need to add 400. So the nth term of this one is 10n plus 400. And finally, for sequence c. For sequence c, we look at the differences again. This time we're subtracting, and it's subtract 23, subtract 21, and subtract 19. Now just like sequence A, we don't have a common difference here, so it's not a linear sequence, we need to check the next difference to see if it's quadratic. And if we do those second differences, we find plus 2 and plus 2. So it is a quadratic sequence. If we half this 2, we find the coefficient of n squared, which again is 1. So we write our sequence. Underneath this, we write n squared, which is just the square numbers. And we subtract them. So 530 take away 1 is 529. 507 take away 4 is 503. 486 take away 9 is 477, and 467 take 16 is 451. This is now the linear part of our sequence. We can find the nth term of it by looking at the common difference. In this one it's always take away 26, so the sequence must be take away 26n, but we don't want to start at negative 26, we want to start at 529, so we need to add 555. So the nth term of this linear part is negative 26n plus 555. This means the nth term of the sequence c is n squared, take 26n, plus 555. Now we can move on to part b of the question. We're told that sequence a is greater than sequence b, and this is greater than sequence c. If we write that down algebraically, we can use the nth terms to say n squared plus 10n is greater than 10n plus 400, which is greater than n squared minus 26n plus 555. Let's take a look at the first part of this inequality here. If you subtract 10n from both sides, then the 10n's will cancel, and you're just left with n squared is greater than 400. If you then subtract 400 from both sides, you get n squared take away 400 is greater than 0. You can factorise this, it's the difference of two squares, you get n plus 20 and n minus 20 is greater than 0. The solution to this inequality comes in two parts. Either n is less than negative 20, or n is greater than positive 20. Now let's look at the second part of this inequality, when 10n plus 400 is greater than n squared minus 26n plus 555. For this one we're going to start by subtracting 10n from both sides. If you subtract it from the left you get 400, and if you subtract it from the right we end up with n squared, take away 36n plus 555. Now let's also subtract 400 from both sides, so on the left hand side we get 0, and on the right hand side n squared, take away 36n plus 155. Now if 0 is greater than this quadratic, then this quadratic is also less than 0, so we can write this the other way around, like this. This quadratic will also factorise its n take 31 and n take 5 is less than 0. And the solution to this inequality can be written down as one inequality, which is n is in between 5 and 31. Now we were asked to find a range of values of n for which this was true. Now when we work with sequences, we don't ever have negative terms, in fact the first term is when n equals 1. So we can lose the first part of the first solution, n is less than negative 20, since we're not interested in terms where n is negative. Now if we look at what we have left, we have n is greater than 20, 
and then n is in between 5 and 31. The only way for both of these statements to be true is if n is in between 20 and 31. And that's your solution to this question. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.